Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out the Radio Masters T8 Lite. It is an 8 channel, budget friendly, game controller style remote controller. So it looks the same as the T8 Pro remote controller I've done a review on some time ago. But the T8 Lite is made to be a simple to use remote controller for beginners or for someone who just wants a basic compact remote controller for the popular D8 and the D16 FR Sky protocol receivers. So it does not come with the Fly Sky, the Corona, the High Tech, the Hot, the Radio Link, and some other protocols like the T8 Pro does with its full CC2500 RF module, but it has a light version of that CC2500 RF module. And it does not come with a display monitor like the Pro version. In fact, it does not even have the pins on the rear interface. So even if you wanted to, you are not able to. And it also does not support OpenTX anyhow. And it also does not have the UFL connector interface for the antenna. So if you want to do it yourself an antenna like I did on the Pro model here, you will need to solder it on. Now, it also does not have the CNC upgrades and comes with a potentiometer gimbal instead of the hall sensor gimbals. But it does have two of the same 500 milliamp, 3.7 volt rechargeable LiPo batteries built in. So in the front, we have the power push button on and off switch. We have the neck strap, which is made out of plastic instead of metal, like the, the Pro version. We have the battery indicator LED lights and the light up logo. Now, this is the gimbal from the Tyrannus that I put on here, but it does come with a two piece gimbal sticks and they are the same as the Pro model, like these ones here, which I have taken off. I kind of prefer these sticks over those, so I placed it on here. So you can be removed and changed out with any other M3 gimbal sticks. So on the top, we have two two position toggle switches. And we have two three position toggle switches. And underneath of the dust cover, we have the trainer port. And we have the type C port for charging of the built in batteries and also for simulator hookup. The micro SD card is just nothing there. This is just the hole. There's no DVR underneath. It doesn't support any micro SD card. And we also have the do it yourself antenna hole, which has a cover. So let me try and take it out here. So there you go. There's the antenna hole. You can kind of see the hole underneath of it. So in the back, we have a physical bind button and we also have a fold out finger rests and they come in handy even when you're a thumber. You can rest your index finger on there and if you are a pincher, you could actually rest your pinky finger on there or even your second to the last finger on there. They feel real good and I'm glad they did put that finger rest. And on the bottom is the speaker grill. So if you are a beginner, the T8 Lite would probably be the cheapest remote controller that you can get to get you started flying FPV. Now, because it has the simulator support, all you need is this controller, a USB to USB-C charge cable, data cable, and a simulator on your PC to get started. Simply connect the controller to your PC via the USB to USB-C cable. Calibrate the sticks in the simulator and you are flying in the simulator. And when you are done, 
turn off the power to the remote controller and because it is still connected to your PC, your PC will start charging up the built-in batteries. So to bind it to a quadcopter, turn on the remote controller. Now go to the back and remove the back cover. And here is the bind button. Press the bind button for one second. It will start beeping for about five to six seconds. And that is the duration of the binding mode. Now, if it beeps singularly, it is set to the D8 protocol. But if it double beeps like it did right now, it is set to the D16 protocol. So all you have to do to change protocols is to short press the bind button while it is beeping. So press it again for one second. And short press. D8 protocol. D16 protocol. Once again. D8 protocol, D16 protocol. All right guys, so to bind it to a D8 protocol receiver, you need to first set the controller to the D8 protocol. So power it up, flip it over, remove the cover, and press that bind button for one second. single beeps so it is set to the d8 protocol so we are good to go it'll beep for five to six seconds and it'll come to a rest so put the quadcopter with the d8 receiver or built-in receiver quadcopters like the emax tiny hawk the tiny hawk 2 or the tiny hawk freestyle into the bind mode so power up the quadcopter and press the bind button just follow the manufacturer's instructions here Now flip it over and find the bind button. The bind button should be right there. And it should say bind right next to it as well. So go ahead and hit that bind button. There you go. I felt it press. So the quad copter is now in the binding mode. And now you can go back to the remote controller and press that bind button for one second. The light sequence should change. There you go. The light sequence just changed. So we have a successful bind. So what you want to do now is power cycle the quadcopter. Now I've already set my switches to the way I like them. But what you need to do at this time is go to Betaflight and arrange the switches to how you like them. So I have my arming switch right here. So let's see. And I have my beeper. And this is my mode button. That's angle mode. And that will be acro mode or air mode. And this button is flip over crash. So now you are ready to fly. All right, guys, so to bind it to a D16 receiver quadcopter, first, you need to set the remote controller to the D16 protocol. So power up the remote control and press that bind button for one second. Okay, D8 protocol, so short press, double beep, so it is in the D16 protocol so let it rest now 
Next, you need to power up the quad cutter and uh, press the bind button on the receiver at the same time you power up the quad cutter. So what I have here is my 4S battery powering up my Toolkit RC's M8 charger. And I'm going to place it in the output mode and output to just power and set it to start. All I need to do is press this button to give it power to the quad cutter. And in between, I have a smoke stopper. That'll give it power to the quad copter. And all I need to do is press that bind button. You can kind of see it. The receiver is right underneath of this plate here. So you see that receiver? It's an RXSR receiver. And you see that bind button right over there, that little black round thing on that silver um, platform. So all I need to do is hit that bind button at the same time, I turn power on to the quad copter. That'll put the receiver into the binding mode. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and press that button and give it power. Okay, so as you can see, there's a red light and a green light. So it is in the binding mode. So now let's go to the remote controller and put it into the binding mode press it for one second and the light is blinking that red light is blinking so we have a successful bind so what i need to do now is power cycle the quad copter turn off power to it and turn it back on and the light should be solid green now which it is so there you go the red light disappeared and we just have the green solid light on the receiver so we have a successful bind so again now what you need to do is go to beta flight and arrange your switches if you already have it arranged then you are good to go but if not go to beta flight and you need to arrange the switches and get it set it up to how you like it and then you are ready to fly Hi right, guys, so here I'm flying the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2. So the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 is a very stable quadcopter. I would say it is one of the best tiny hoop there is to learn how to fly. So if you are a beginner, go ahead and invest in one of these quadcopters. It is one of the nicest ones. So let's see how far the Tiny Hawk 2 can go with the Radio Master T8 Lite. So as you see on the top left corner, the RSSI is about in the low 70s, high 60s, now dropping down to 60s. And right in the middle of your screen is the 150 meter bush and I'm turning around on it. And the RSSI drops down to about in the 50s. So not bad at all so with one of these type quadcopters guys you're not going to go that far with it uh you're probably going to fly in your backyard go into your house fly inside your house so really really nice and it is meant to be flown in a small park or a backyard so something like this type of quadcopter is perfect for the radio masters t8 light Okay guys, so here I am now flying the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 freestyle. So this is another quadcopter that I would highly recommend. Uh, although this one is not completely a beginner quadcopter, for you to start off with, the Tiny Hawk 2 would be good because it's got the prop guards, it's a hoop style quadcopter, so you won't be breaking the props as much. But this one is open prop, so be careful when you're flying this one. So if you have not tried one of these quadcopters, guys, you should get one of these. It is one of the best quadcopters. It is very cheap, and also the batteries are also 
very cheap as well. What I meant was inexpensive, not cheaply made or anything like that. Now, the Radio Masters T8 Lite feels really good in the hands. And even though it has the potentiometer gimbals, you know, I really cannot tell the difference between the Hall sensor gimbals and the regular potentiometer gimbals like on this one versus the T8 Pro. So here we go towards the 150 meter bush and it's doing pretty good. Low 60s, upper 50s around there turning around. So it is basically about the same as the Tiny Hawk 2, same type of built in SPI receiver. So, and the RSSI is gradually increasing as it is getting closer. Awesome. So, if you have one of these types of remote controls, then you know, invest in one of these type of quadcopters. It is on the cheap, like I said, or inexpensive, and it'll get you free styling. Okay, so here we have the Holy Bros Copus 1. Now this one has the RXSR receiver, so the RSSI is not working with this transmitter and the RSSI value is stuck there at 49. Now the RXSR receiver needs an auxiliary channel to set up the uh, RSSI values and you need OpenTX firmware to set it up. But check it out guys, the T8 Lite is just like a bigger transmitter and feels really great flying a five inch quad and it has no problem going beyond the 150 meter bush. So you can fly any quad with a D8 receiver and you can fly any quad with a D16 receiver with the Radio Masters T8 Lite. And it feels really good too. So there you go guys, if you are a beginner pilot and want to get into FPV on the cheap, get yourself one of these and practice in the simulator. And once you feel confident enough, get a quadcopter you feel comfortable with. And I do recommend the Tiny Hawk too. And go out there and FPV. Now the Radio Masters T8 Lite is good enough for a five inch quad as you see here and it can get you flying in the simulator as you saw before so that you can learn how to fly with minimum investment on your part now i don't think there is a transmitter price this low that'll get you flying fpv this easy it is easy to bind and set up as you've seen and all you need to know is the basic setup in beta flight to get you to set up the switches and get you out there flying. So that'll do it for this video of the Radio Masters T8 Lite. Now, if you want to check it out for yourself, the link to the product is down below in the video description. So with that, thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.